Okay. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Good afternoon. My name is Gary, and I welcome you to um, Cat Trains, Photo File, and Upload. Um, I am a part of Rancho Ceramics Elite Team, and I would like to present to you Photo File and Upload. Okay. Hello, uh, my name is Elizabeth, and I'm also a student of Cat Trains. And I personally love photo file and upload because it helps keep my work organized, and also I can reference later if I need to to show somebody. And yeah. Hey. Hi, my name is Brianna. I'm sorry, voice crack. <clears throat> my name is Brianna, and um, I'm also part of the Rancho Ceramics Elite Team. And Kat Train is an amazing teacher, artist, and member of NSICA as well. <laughs> um, she's a good friend, and um, I, in my opinion, the photo file and upload is organ it's really organized, and it'll help in the long run because when in the future for like um, future exhibitions and stuff like that, you'll um, be able to go back and see everything you've done in the past and. Ex you already have the pictures ready for the exhibitions, so. Hi, my name is Zumia, and I am part of the Rancho Ceramics Elite team as well, and I'm a second year student with Train. Um, I find the photo file and upload really convenient as it allows me to find something from, let's say, if I made something four years ago or four months ago, really easily because if I can label it and then put even more files within the one file that I labeled. The photo file and upload process isn't just helpful for the students, but also for the instructors. And my name is Janet, and I'd like to welcome to the stage our role model and instructor, Kat Train. Thank you very much. All right. Oh, wow, more people showed up. Right on, welcome, thank you. Indeed, my name, I'll make sure I'm not making too much noise here. Uh, my name is Kat Train, and these are indeed some of my students from the Rancho Ceramic Studio, particularly our elite travel team. Um, and we did actually present last year at Kansas City. Now, the other people that I'd like to briefly introduce to you, because we have more people to our team, right there in the back, we have some of our veterans. We have Vesna and Ash. They are both seniors, and they're going to be running the internet for us, too, in this presentation. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, our program is out of Las Vegas, Nevada, and some of you might be familiar with us, and some of you, this might be new. Um, what it is that I'm going to be sharing with you today is a process that we refer to as photo, file, and upload. Um, it was kind of funny when I was explaining to my students, and I have 250 students every year at our public high school, which is actually a Title I high school, so we're not we're not a private art school or anything like that, so anybody can do this. And I also have intentions with this presentation that it's not just for teachers, it's not just for high school students, it's for artists of all levels, it's for artists of all types, whether they're students, teachers, or even studio potters. But when I told my students back home I was presenting on photo file and upload, they were like, what? why, they didn't understand why, because it's such a fluid part of what we do in our studio. In fact, what I'm going to be showing you today is actually a pretest 
that I do with my freshmen. Um, they go through this process without me, and actually this year when they did it, I was in Barcelona for the IAC conference instead. So they do this all on their own, and um, all of these resources, because I know some people were concerned about what if I won't remember this, I'm not good at computers. Well, that's why this presentation is done using our website, which is ranchoceramics.com. Um, this right here is actually our blog, which has not been updated before I came here. I feel bad about that. But you can see what's going on in the studio right now. Ooh, we actually have a really excellent show that's opening next week at Las Vegas City Hall. Um, but ranchoceramics.com has all of the resources that I am going to be showing you today. Oh, oh, hello. <laughs> So if you have difficulty recalling what it is that I'm talking about here, you can go back to the website and find it all. So now, where my students go to get this information when they're doing their pretest is they head to their course pages. And of course, this is something that my beginning students do. So we go to Ceramics 1. And you got to keep things colorful and lively. So all of the projects are in buttons and different pages. But for our purposes, we're going to photo file. Um, and this will introduce the process to you guys as well as to my beginning students. So the first thing that we discuss is why photography photo documentation is so imperative to our careers as artists. And um, these are actually some examples of student photography that has been used to enter exhibitions. Oh, nice choice. Um, this is actually the work of one of our seniors who's running the computers back there, a little self-promotion. Um, <laughs> this is Ashley Ortega's piece. It is a naked Raku Sager piece. The concept was an imaginary musical instrument. But the students take their own photos, they adjust their own photos and they manage their own portfolios. Now, okay, sure, she's a senior, but I believe she was actually a sophomore when she took that photo. Now, um, again, it's like, wow, those are nice photos. I'd like to take pictures like that, but why? I mean, if any of you teach in, in high school, you know that you get a lot of pushback from your students. And so explaining to them the rationale is very imperative. First of all, of course, you all know if you drop ceramics, they break. Um, also, sometimes if you mishandle them, they do, but if you have photo documentation, that will help to assure that you still have records of your work. So my students actually take pictures of their greenware as well as their glazeware. We don't fire it until there is a photo, well, three to four photos as they know, three to four photos in their portfolios. We actually review the portfolios as we're loading the kiln. If there are no documentation, they're not fired. Then beyond that, of course, is in the event of sales. If you sell your work, it may be the last time you see it. And yes, I do cover this with my students because, for example, um, the elite team that you see here, they earned their way here. They fundraised their way here by selling pottery. So they need to have records of their work. And so when you sell your work, you don't see it always. Next, of course, and this is perhaps most important for those administrators, is accomplishment. It actually documents growth very fluidly. So if your state, if you work at a public school, requires records of student growth, there's nothing better than a portfolio because they're actually documented, as you'll see, chronologically. It's very, very easy to see when something was created. The students even know this. Um, so accomplishment, and it also feels good too. Next, of course, is promotion. So um, again, my students, to earn their way here, they held studio sales, and they also did something called a make-a-thon, where um, we did um, a marathon of ceramics for 12 hours to earn money. But you can very easily use the photos that you have in your digital portfolio that's hosted online to promote anything it is that you are needing to, whether it is yourself as a professional or events. Next, of course, as the students mentioned, if you are going to be submitting to any kinds of exhibitions, you've got all your images taken, you know where they are because they're filed properly, and you can very easily download them and re-upload them to the submission website. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly in today's world, is it's so easy to share with friends and family 
And I mean, I don't know if my students know that I do this, but when I meet new people and they find out what I do, I brag about my students and I love to show their portfolios because as their teacher and their mentor, I have access to all 250 portfolios for this year, 250 portfolios from last year and the year before and the year before, and I can always brag because I can just pull it up on my phone and I can, I can easily add people to documents using Google Drive. So that's just a little bit of an introduction for you. I hope you're sold now. And so again, remember this is a pretest lesson that my beginning students go through. Now, this next thing, you'll see there's um, little red areas where they're supposed to take notes. This is so that they can always go back and refer to it on their own. So that's um, just an introduction as to why we do it. And now, here's how to take better photos. Um, some people have a misconception that, oh, just because we have all of these all the time, we all know how to take really good photos. Um, I disagree. Not everybody is as trained as this gentleman right here. Hi there. <laughs> Um, and so sometimes you need to actually teach people basic things like framing and lighting and focus. So I break it into three components. What is a good photo? Because good is extremely subjective. First of all, we talk about um, framing and orientation. And so if you look at the two sample photos that I have right there, um, these are actual student work. This is an example, fairly clearly, of poor orientation. What I tell my students to think about is, is your work more vertical than it is uh, horizontal, or is it more horizontal than vertical? And turn your camera accordingly. And so that they can see more clearly what it is that we're looking for. Uh, next, of course, we're talking about framing, and this is where you have just a little bit of breathing room around the object. And as professionals, this does seem fairly logical, but some of the things that we even forget as professionals is we might take a very well-framed photograph, but then we forget, oh, if it's going on a business card, you have to think of trimming and things like that. So. When we look at a photo like this, we can all tell it just feels very claustrophobic, very tight. You need to give it more breathing room. And the other photo is much more sufficiently framed. So again, for students, it's really good to see examples on all of these things. And visual examples for us visual people work better than anything. Uh, the next component of what makes a good photo is focus and lighting. And focus does go without saying, I mean, this is a really beautiful piece, but you can't see all of the amazing details in it. Um, I will tell you, though, from my experience in working with high school students, they're like, yeah, I know how to use my phone. I take pictures all the time. Well, how do you focus then, guys? You guys know how to focus your phone, right? What do you do? Tap the screen, yeah, whatever the center is that you're going to be shooting, tap the screen, whoop, it's all in focus. So I get after my students, I'm like, you know how to focus, I've seen those selfies, so focus, focus your images. And then of course, for us, it goes without saying, but you need to make sure that you have proper lighting. And of course, you also know that photographing glazeware is a bit more complex. And my advanced students do work with um, tungsten lamps and they learn how to bounce lights and things like that. But these photos were all taken place in um, very inexpensive light boxes that I buy from B&H Photo, um, which I can share that link if you're interested. And it just has a little daylight lamp in it, and it works beautifully for most objects. So the third and final component, which can be the trickiest to communicate to your students, is descriptive views of the objects that you're taking photos of. Um, these two photos are the exact same object, but right there it looks very flat, very stagnant, versus the next photo, when it's turned to a slight three quarters, you can actually see the dimension and you can see the different angles and you can tell more about the object. So what I tell my students is when you're taking photos, you're not taking a dead center photo, a dead front photo, um, you're taking a front three quarters, front three quarters, back three quarters, back three quarters, at the very, very least. Um, and then most of them uh, at the more advanced level or when they make work that they're very proud of, you know what it's like when you make a great piece. You just get into it and you're shooting like 50 or more photos, very easy. And some of my students have said, can I take more? Oh yes, take more, please take more. 
So that's a little bit about good photos. And now comes the meat of my presentation, ladies and gentlemen. Um, what we're going to be talking about here is actually how we're using Google Drive to organize and manage all of this data. So just to give you a little perspective, again, I have 250 students every year and every single one of them has a portfolio. And I have to have access to it, they have to have access to it. I've been using Google Drive, uh, I think this is my fifth year that I've been using Google Drive. In the beginning it wasn't as fluid because not everybody had their phones, their smartphones, and we were actually using laptop computers and interfacing with peripherals, which was very challenging. But this year was the first year that I actually allowed the students to use their um, personal devices for this purpose and it has become, I mean, wouldn't you guys agree? It's become much more fluid since we've done that. And I know everybody is so happy they don't have to use flash drives and memory card readers and all that anymore. So now, uh, again, I have to manage all these portfolios and the students also need access to them. Um, about six and seven years ago, I was managing a Buffalo Lynx's server that the school did not let me have access to. And so I created my own intranet server, which was really complex to deal with. But once Google Drive came out, I gave it a try, and I am a believer, and I hope that you will be as well. So, like I said, this is the meat. The first thing that the students have to have is they have to have a Gmail email account. Um, and you, if you are teachers and you are looking to be managing these accounts, you also need to have a Gmail email account. In my opinion and experience, I find that it is easiest to, like for example, in my case, my Gmail email is ranchoceramics at gmail.com. I'm not using my personal email because it is going to stuff your mailbox and it will fill your, uh, your Drive account. I, like I said, I've been using this for five years and I've used up about 10 gigs of my 15 free gigs. Um, you can buy more, but I don't think I need to quite yet. I'll start cycling them out soon. So after everybody has a Gmail email account, um, there are students, of course, that do not have personal technology devices. I have a couple of contingencies that work fairly well with that. Um, one option is they can have one of their peers photograph their work for them and then just simply email it to them. Or the, the peer who has the phone or camera can upload it to their own Google Drive and share it with their peer, which if that's confusing to you, don't worry, I'm going to clarify all of that for you. Um, because I know, as teachers, we always have to make sure that we're addressing everybody's needs. But I would say 90 to 95% of my students have some sort of personal technology device, and they're very excited to use them in the class. So after they have a Gmail email account, it really helps to have the Google Drive application installed on your phone as well. If you have an iOS phone, an Apple phone, you have to have the Google Drive application, otherwise it won't function properly. So that's just to get yourself set up. Now, um, if you guys can scroll down a little bit on the website, you can see here on the website, I actually have two videos of this process embedded. And this is what my students use to learn how to do this process. Now, I've actually created a third kind of top secret video for you guys so that you can see what it's like on the receiving end, the teacher's end of things. Um, because these are mostly need-to-know basis for the students. Now. Before we get started with these videos, I want to make sure that you guys understand. This is an interactive presentation. I know I seem like a talking head right now, but I will be requesting for you to participate. So make sure that you pay attention really close to these videos because you will have the opportunity to share with me photos that you have on your phone and you can see how this process will function. All right, you guys ready? Yeah? Okay, so um, the first video that we're going to be looking at here, and I'm just going to preface it because then you won't be able to hear me after this. Um, this first video here is called the initial portfolio setup. Um, and it says it in here clearly, but I want to make sure that you understand because my students forget this. The students will only be sharing officially with you one folder. 
their entire career, and I have, for example, those two back there I've had for four years. They have only shared one thing with me, that's it. And that is this initial portfolio folder. After that, if there's something they want me to see, they just put it in there and I go and see it whenever I want to. They only share once. And so this is about that initial share. And then after that, we'll get into the other details. All right, let's do it. Now for the in initial setup of your Google Drive portfolio. First, access your Google Drive app. Next, you are going to create a new folder. To do this, you push the plus in the bottom right hand corner. Choose folder. You're going to be titling it your last name dot first initial. Then after the folder is created, you need to share it with me so that I can see it as well. You need to add people. The people that you are going to add is ranchoceramics at gmail.com. In the message, please write your name, your period, and the class level there you're in. After you have this information, you're going to send. And when you do this, I actually get a notification on my phone that says that you've shared something with me. I also get an email, <laughs> so you only need to do this once. After you've done this, you have finished your initial setup of your Google Drive portfolio. Can I talk? Oh, hello, okay. So again, this is what the students see and that's the first thing they do. They set up their portfolio. Like I said, I do have a secret video that will show you what it's like when you receive it. Now, again, I have a lot of students and so when they're doing this, this initial share, it's only my beginning students that are doing this because all of my other advanced level students have done it in previous years. So I have four classes of 45. It's still quite a few that are my beginning students. Um, that's still quite a few people, but they're all doing it in about a week span. So as soon as I get them in my email, I can go through and organize them, but I'll show you that in my, my next, excuse me, not this next video, but the one after that. This next video is about taking the photos and how to get them uploaded and to actually organize them chronologically. And now it's time to photograph your work. So set up your piece into the light box and remember to turn on the lights. Lighting makes all the difference. When you shoot your work, you're going to shoot a minimum of four photographs from the most descriptive angles. Make sure that your framing is good so that the object is not crowded. A piece that's more fragile, you want to do everything you can not to move it. Now I'm getting a little bit of the background in there, so I have to actually pick up the object and turn it around. For more basic objects, four photos at a minimum. After you've shot your photos, you're ready to file them. To file them, it's easiest to go directly to your gallery 
can find the photos there and select them all. You can select them by pressing and holding. Then you'll simply share. You'll choose Save to Drive. Realize that if you don't have the Google Drive application installed in your phone, the Save to Drive option will not appear. It is best and easiest if you install the Drive application in your phone. Now I can choose which account I'm going to save it to and I can file it as well. Now I know that I want it to be in my portfolio that was shared with ranchaceramics at gmail.com. This is my last name dot first initial folder. I go inside there and there's no folders. What I need to do next is create a folder. This will be my project folder. The project folder is always named with the date first. This will allow your photographs of your objects to always be in chronological order. That way it is easier to see your growth. So I'll name this one 2016.09 because I finished it in the month of September in 2016. Next, I will call it the title of the work. In your case, you will title it the project. So the first project that you did is pre-test cups. So you would call yours 2016.09.pretest cups. For me, my piece has a different name, so I'll call it the title of the work. Then I say OK. Now I have a folder, so I've up here at the top you can see that it says the folder name and I'm inside the folder. So I choose select folder. Then I choose save. After that you have to wait while the images are being uploaded. If you're in the studio, service might be a little bit slower, so I encourage you to stand next to a window or you could even wait until you get home to upload them or that you have a better signal somewhere else. When the upload is complete, you will receive a notification. You want to check and make sure that the images are uploaded correctly. Now, if I go to my drive, go to my portfolio with my last name dot first initial, I should see my folder. Inside the folder, I should have my images. If I click on the images, I can view them large. Okay, so now in the interest of time, we're gonna actually not watch the third video, we're gonna actually do it. Does that sound like an idea? Okay, so it's easy enough, right? Makes sense. So what I'd like you to do, I'm sure you guys have seen this meme on Facebook. So what I'd like you to do is go into your gallery on your phone. This does work best if you have the Google Drive app. And choose the third photo in your gallery. And I want you to share it with RanchoCeramics at gmail.com. And what's going to happen is, um, here, this is my Google Drive, ranchoceramics at gmail.com. And over on the left, way up at the top, it says shared with me. So if we go inside there, um, as you, and Ash, can you actually change the view up at the top right? See the checkerboard up there? Way over to the right? The other way? Yeah. Over a little bit more? Yep, click on that. Oops. Oh, it's that one, excuse me, yeah. Okay, so share something with me and you'll actually see it magically appear here in my Google Drive. Yes. Not in my Google Drive, it will not. And if you were my student, I'd say, all right, did you read the directions? You have to install a Google Drive app on your phone. That's fine, absolutely. So that's actually a great question because I have had students who've emailed it to me and 
I'm a ruthless teacher. I'm like, oh, they're like, why is it missing? I said, because it's not in your Google Drive. <laughs> oh, wow. And let me do that one more time. Whoever, somebody share again. Share again with me. Oh, my phone gets notifications because, you see that? See how it just showed up? Um, click on that picture there for me. Great. Wow, that's beautiful. So, now, um, the next thing that we would do is actually organize this because I'm the teacher. What we're going to do is right click on one of these images and we're going to organize it. And so we will add to my drive because right now it's just shared with me. I know, look at all those. Oh my gosh, these are great. Oh God, somebody shared a meme. Uh-oh, I don't want to know what grinds your gears. <laughs> okay, let's, let's go because we're almost out of time here, guys. So are we organizing these? Right-click on one of those for me, gang. Did we add to our drive yet? Go back to shared with me, please, ladies. Right-click on one of those. Add to my drive. And then we need to click on organize. There we go. Now I can file it. And I have a pretty, I don't know, I guess it's fairly sophisticated file system. If you go back up to the top, it says 1617. So I'd go inside there. And then I will have, yep, double click it. I have all of my classes. Uh, excuse me, I go into Digifolios. And then I go into all of my classes and I can organize it. But if you'll open up, for example, period 7 AP 3D, that is my period 7 advanced placement class. And if you were to go into, I don't know, Ash Ortega's folder maybe, if you go inside there, you can see um, her folder system and we could actually put it wherever it needs to be. Um, so that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I know that I am running out of time. I get so excited to share these kinds of things with people. Um, I will actually be putting up some teacher's links at RanchoCeramics.com so that you can also see this portfolio management portion. Um, and hopefully this is something that you'll consider using in your classrooms, but maybe even your prof professional studio practice as well, as many of my other colleagues in studio practices have found this very useful. So please consider using Google Drive to help make streamlining your portfolio system much more effective. Thank you so much for coming today. I appreciate your time.